Hello, in this video I want to show you how I make my videos. Let's start off with the recording software. I'm working on Windows as you can see on Paint, so I'm using the Windows version of Hypercam. I use Hypercam 2.2901. As far as I know, that is about the last version of Hypercam that was free. All the other versions that are above this version are paid versions. You should find this on the internet. I also use an XVIT MPEG-4 codec that you can see working here. For the presentation I usually use PowerPoint because let's make this full screen you can have like nice drawing with this one. What you see here is two blue bars you didn't see them in the presentation I switch again you don't see them in the presentation um, I have these two bars because they tell me until what point I can actually draw inside my presentation. The reason is now we're going back to Hypercam. I'm not recording the full screen as you can see in the screen area. I have like a rectangle that is in the middle of my screen. It's about 60 to 9, 16 to 9. And the reason for that is because I personally think that's enough. I don't need to record my screen. That way I don't need to hide my taskbar or anything else. And because I'm usually working with like this kind of stuff, um, it's probably fine. One thing you really have to take care of is the sound. What you want to do is, if you started Hypercam, you want to you want to set the priority to max. That means opening your Windows Task Manager, finding Hypercam, and setting the priority to not this one, but at least this one. If you don't do that, your sound and your video will like slowly start to not fit together anymore, and that's pretty annoying. Okay, then I record my video and oh, I should also tell this one. I have the hotkeys are very very important. Hotkey F4, I use this constantly because I need time to think. And I don't want to waste your time while I'm thinking, so I always press pause. This is the reason why my intonation sometimes sounds a little bit strange. As you can see here, this is like my fourth version of this video. I usually start off like 10 times, 15 times because I don't get the introduction as I want it to be. Or sometimes while explaining something, I realize, okay, that was bullshit, let's just start over again. Okay, and uh, yeah, basically that's it for the recording itself. And um, let's go into post-production, if you can actually call it like that. All my new videos that I recorded end up in this place. For example, the ones that, are, the ones that failed and the one that I'm like recording at the moment. And you see a lot of scripts here. These are my post-production scripts. I use, how you spell that? Okay, not spell, but pronounce. I'm using AVIDMUX, <laughs> AVIDMUX. I have no idea, sorry for that. So what do I do? Um, I record this small rectangle on my screen. So when I just upload that one to YouTube, YouTube will shrink this actually to fit 640 to, I don't know, 320 or something. So the quality will get very bad because this is like not high, not, not big enough to like fit in a 720p video. So what I do in post-production for YouTube itself is, okay, let's just load the video. First, I use a different codec. And second, I use a resizing filter. This will resize my video a little bit bigger and therefore YouTube will not shrink it down and the quality quality will not get lost. Also I use the lame mp3 encoder and that way I encode the videos and put them on to YouTube. And then I delete the videos on my local hard disk but that's not important. For saving I use a different format. So and then yeah I just render out. So the problem that I usually have here is um, I have a lot of videos to do like that and I don't want to like set it, these settings all the time especially the, the resizing filter here like setting the values I don't like that so let's close all this stuff this is the reason why I have all these scripts over here let's put this a little bit on the side so um, yeah we have all these small scripts that you see uh, basically just shortcuts for the real like program um, most of them point to one Python file or another batch file that is pointing to the Python file. And we have a lot of ways of configuring that Python file. What does the Python file do? I think I explained this in a different video. It's just creating a Python input script that can be used by, 
Avi Dimax, the program that I just opened. Sorry, I'm really I'm not sure about the pronunciation. So I can show you this with, for example, this one. You will see what things open. This is the batch, uh, this is just a path, but this is when the batch file itself starts to run. So we are going to run this Python script and it gets these parameters. This Python script is created by me. If you give me any space to upload it, I will upload it. Just don't have any space to upload it. If you want it, let me know. And then we, we run Avi Demux. This will is this one, and um, this file is going to be created, as you can see. It's basically the same that is written here. So we start Avi Demux. I'm really not sure about the pronunciation. And give it this file as input, so it loads this and um, yeah already set up all the filters and everything we need. And this is not so important, you don't need to understand this, but just let's take a look at this Python file itself. So it's just a bunch of um, yeah statements for Avi Demux. You can write this yourself, you can have it from me if you let me know where I can send it. Oh, and uh, by the way, in this case, I configured this, so um, there's this uh, no auto convert option for me that I implemented, so it will keep the the, the application open. I can close it now. It, this is like if I have to do cuttings. So I just open it, do the cuttings and then save it manually. Usually it's more like working, it's more working like this. So let's start this. And finished. And as a small extra for like me for archiving all these things. This is the reason why I actually used the Python script before I used the batch script but two less capabilities. This video actually has the same timestamp as this one. This is what the Python script also does. So when I convert my videos, they still have the same timestamp, the same date, the same time, like it's the original video. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it. I hope it helped. If you have any questions, um, just write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.